patron saint of wayward girls. Santa Alicia, saint of oil-slicked Mission Street. Bless us in the taquerias, cantinas, botanicas, in the mortuaries and at the Andes, Italian bakery, where ballerinas dance on frosted birthday cakes. Deliver us, Santa Alicia, we don't want to cut our feet on broken glass. Patron saint of the forgotten girls, pin-eyed girls, pregnant girls, and girls in high heel shoes standing on 18th Street. Have pity for us, Santa Alicia. We hear demons speaking to us from bedrooms and alleyways. Pray for us who have grandfathers, brothers, and fathers, priests, uncles, and strangers who will not let us leave. Bless our eyes and our tongues. Take us away. Give us a chance to numb the pain. Blessed are you among virgins, for you are the one who got away. Uh, this one's called Don Cornigarioni. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the morning your girl tearing your screaming son on her hip like a holster. Peel the screen off your open kitchen window. Found you slumped over in the recliner with the television adding color to your frozen face. Miss Blake told everyone that your heart gave out overnight, just like the engine in that old Buick Regal that sat on bricks in your front yard. Who knew that you were an OG? Or that the house two doors down that slang rocks was really your main gig. Last image of you, bare chested on stoop, swole up body like an ebony sphinx, with jail yard tats, crip walking in perfect penmanship. Last words for you, Don Cornigalione, what the homies in heel to heel stance on the corner named you. The ones that get hellos from the 5-0 with warrant checks and bodies sprawled over the hoods of black and white police cruisers. Now it's Sunday, and white tables sit end to end on your balding lawn. Old women in colorful church hats chat over plates filled with greens next to your homies in creased dickies. Last sound of you, Tupac, Booming's voice, coming from an Elko sitting high on hydraulics like an angry iguana, rattling windows with ghetto prophecy. It's tongue, it's not even permanent. James said it would close up if I ever wanted to take it out. James? Callis's cheeks were red, her curls crackling with static. How is that even possible? You know, from Pagan Piercing, I left the party to take a walk and I saw him opening a shop. So she stopped. This could not be about the piercing. It had to be something else. She looked around the room. There was a dying fire in the grate, a few books out open on the coffee table, a pile of yarn uncharacteristically tangled on the floor. It's so gross, Pallas said, and stupid, pretentious, so pointless. So she held up her hands in surrender and flopped onto the sofa. Ow! She jumped up, rubbing the tender spot on her thigh. A deformed-looking doll creature lurked under the pillow, its body riddled with pins. It's not supposed to be you, Pallas said. The printed face was crude, but the stitches were small and even. I thought you didn't believe in all that witchy stuff. I don't. I made it a long time ago. It was meant to be ironic, okay? <laughs> How about the smoking? Was that ironic too? I'm sorry, Pallas said carefully, allowing herself to lean against the arm of the easy chair. I didn't enjoy it. Pallas, what's wrong? Pallas turned away, pretending to look out into the night. It's just them. All that woo-woo crap, stupid pagan holidays. Do they actually believe that stuff? They have a million books about a zillion stupid ideas that are so interesting. But what about me? It's not like they ever bother to crack open a book about parenting. I'm pretty sure they tell you not to have a bunch of wasted heathen sex parties and invite as many degenerate weirdos as possible. <laughs>
Bye. 